Okay, so we are going to start with our um, chapter one test review. I made a section for each um, section that we've done on our in this chapter. And so we'll just take a little time reviewing everything that we've went over so far. So um, the first section, we were just evaluating algebraic exp um, expressions, basically. They told you what x and y were. You just have to put them into the expression. So this one would be um, 42, right? No, 4 times 2. Thank you. If a number and a letter are touching, they are actually being multiplied. 9 times y is 9 times 8. And then you have to multiply before you can add. So 4 times 2 is 8. Seven time, or 9 times 8 is 72. You add those together, and what do we get? 80. 80. Okay, the next one is 6 times A, which is 2, and B, which is 4. 6 times 2 is? 12. 12 times 4 is? 48. 48. Okay, again, 17 times 10 minus 3 times 6. 17 times 10 is 170. 3 times 6 is? 18. 18. <clears throat> so 170 minus 18, sometimes I do like 170 minus 20, and that would be 150, and then just add back 2. Okay, next one here, I need to put a 7 in for the X, 5 in for the Y. I can do what's in the parentheses first, make sure you do that. So 8 minus 5 is? 3. 7 times 3 is? 21. Okay, so that is how we evaluate. Evaluate basically means to solve. Then our next section, we had to take and write an algebraic expression or to translate an algebraic expression. So it says, write an algebraic expression for the word phrase, two less than a number n. So if I said I had two less apples than you, you would take how many you have and you would subtract two. So in this case, you have to take the number n and minus two. This is the one that I feel like most people will get wrong because they'll do 2 minus n instead. Just because we said less than. So it's like you're taking, if I said Matt has two less um, apples less than you, oh. you would take your number of apples and you would subtract 2 to get his. So that's why. Kind of reversed it. Um, letter F, it says write a word phrase for 25 plus 13t. You can't just write 25 plus 13t. You have to write 13 times t. Um, so you would write 25. And you could say plus, or you could, I mean, you can use different words. Plus, and you could say the product. The product of 13 and t, you could say 13 and a variable. You could you could list this more than one way. Brianna? Could you put it 13 times t plus 25? You could, but then we wouldn't write it like this. You could say 13 times t more than 25, because then, you're, then it would translate to exactly that. But you want to make sure your translations produce the same algebraic expression. Okay, the next one, an algebra, um, write an algebraic expression for the word phrase twice the sum of k and 4. So twice something means what? Multiply by what? Two. Two. So twice the sum. So this is how I always write these. So what is the sum of? Well, k and 4 are being added. So it's twice. This has to go in parentheses. A lot of you guys got these ones wrong on your quiz because you didn't put parentheses around it. The sum, the difference, those are the answer to the problem. 
Okay, so this one, there's a few different ways we could write this. We could say um, 12 less than the product or the quotient of 10 and R. We could say the quotient of 10 and R minus 12. There's lots of different ways we could phrase it. You could say 10 divided by R. If you said 10 divided by R minus 12, you might think it looks like this. 10 divided by R minus 12. That's kind of what it sounds like, right? Yep. So we want to make sure that we say the quotient of 10 and R minus 12. Oh, sorry. Is that better? Devin's calling me on my errors. Oh, I thought you were testing them. Oh. Maybe I was. Mason? So I was going 12 less than 10 divided by R. Yeah, the, it'd be better if you wrote 12 less than the quotient of 10 divided by R because if you read that to me, I could take it as, um, what do you say, 12 less than 10 divided by R? So you could, I could take it like this. This is an R. So if you say 12 less than the quotient, that means that you're dividing and then taking 12 away. So that's why sometimes those ones are, get, get kind of tricky. <clears throat> but you put them in the right order. That's a big deal. So the next section, we talked about the different properties. This always seems to kind of confuse us, but it says use properties to determine whether expressions are equivalent. So for example, we know how to simplify this. So if I took 5 plus x plus 7, does it give me 12 plus x? Yes. Yeah, because I know that I can change the order of things here. So I just use the commutative property. I can take 5 plus 7, that gives me 12, and that gives you 12x. So yes, they are equal. And then I would say it's the commutative property. So on your guys' quiz, there was a lot of you that didn't tell me yes or no if it was equivalent or not. Do you think yes is equal? Yeah, that's fine. So the next one, if I have something inside the parentheses, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. If you add zero to anything, what does it change to? It stays the same. Okay. So this is really just y. And if you have it on the outside, was that equal? 5y. What property tells us that if you add something, if you add zero to something, it doesn't change? The zero property. The, well, the zero property changes to zero. Identity. identity property. So this is yes, the identity property. So if you add zero to something, it keeps this identity. The other thing is if you um, multiply by one. So would the letter just be? I'm, I'm videoing, I'm videoing, otherwise I'd have you come in and just drop my class. I mean, you can pause it. It doesn't let me pause. Yeah, it does. How? <laughs> no, 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 they, they don't need to come back, but I just am curious how to pause. So pause it. It doesn't let me pause. It just doesn't let you pause. Look it, it shows right there. Don't stop. It's a stop. <laughs> don't, don't stop it because it will just stop. It doesn't pause. Sorry to my listeners. <sighs> These young children think they know everything. So would, would the letter just be considered zero? Yeah. Well, letter. you added zero to it, so it just stays Y. No, just like a regular problem. Why would, why would like they the first here? one? Like the visit. Plus X. What was that? Hmm? Like the first one, the five... Like oh, just be like you wouldn't do anything with the yeah because that ha one has an x and one doesn't have an x so you can't combine them, but there is a one in front of that x, an understood one. Okay, the next one right here 
Um, are they equal? No. No, because I could switch the order of this. I could do 12 times 6 times k. So I just use the commutative, um, and then I could use the associative and change where the, the parentheses are. Commutative and the associative. What's 12 times 6? Uh, 72. Does 72k equal 18k? Yes. No. No. How do we know? Well, we use the commutative and the associative property to solve it. So these properties you guys have been using lots, you just haven't been naming them. Devin. Can I hold your turn? No. I'm not we, viewing. This is important we information. Say, like yes or no, do we have to add like which one it is? The we, properties, yes. We have to add the properties mm -hmm. to it? Yep. Like, yeah, so like uh, on your quiz, I just you wrote like yes, associative property. No, distributive property, that type of thing. Okay, so counterexample is a statement that's believed to be true, or a conjecture is a state, statement believed to be true. A counterexample disproves it, okay? So the product of two odd numbers is always an even number. Do you think it's true? No. Well, let's test it out. Give me two odd numbers that multiply to an even number. Brianna. Five times two. Five times, oh, but two. Five times three. Five and three. What does five and three equal? Fifteen. Eight. No, we're. <laughs> this is the product. Oh, <laughs> oh but this did disprove it because it's not even. Sorry. <laughs> I was thinking that we had to find an even, um, an yeah. odd product. <laughs> Okay, so yes, this is a perfect example. There's a whole bunch of them. Okay, we could do another example. We could say like 1 times 9 equals 9. Well, 15 is not even, 9 is not even. So those are counterexamples. Yeah, you can do 2 times 9, 18. Yep, but it says two odd numbers. Oh, that's too hard. <clears throat> so any number that is a factor of 12 is also a factor of 6. 16. 16. Man, I'm having a rough day. <laughs> okay. So, if I have my factors of 12, what are factors of 12? 12. 1. Does 2 go into 12? Yes. Does 3 go into 12? Yes. Does 4? Yes. Does 5? No. 6? Yes. 7? No. 8? Yes. No. 9? No. 10? No. 11? No. 12? Yes. Yes. Okay, so let's find our factors of 16. 1, yeah. 2, yeah. 3, no. 4, yeah. 5, no. 6, no. 7, no. 8, no. Yes. anything else before 16? Yes, 16. No. Just 16. Okay, so it says any number that is a factor of 12 is also a factor of 16. Well, let's look here. No. This guy is not, and this guy is not. And this guy are not. So you would just write like 3, 6, and 12 are factors of 12, but not 16. So you just have to prove it wrong. Okay, absolute value. These are really simple, but I feel like you guys got lots wrong on your quiz. So just make sure that absolute value, it's the distance a number is from zero. It's always positive. Um, question, Devin? No, I'll say Oh, okay, so what is the absolute value of nine? Nine. nine. What's the absolute value of three? Three. Three. What's nine minus three? Six. Six. Five. Six. Six. Okay. What's the absolute value of four? Four. What's the absolute value of ten? Yeah. What's 10 plus 4? 14. Okay. Now, inside, you have to treat it like parentheses. You do this first. So what is 16 minus 20? Negative 4. Negative 4. What's the absolute value of negative 4? 4. Okay. Pardon? So you don't, you, you do the problem like normal. If it comes out negative, the answer is positive. If it comes out positive, the answer is positive. Oh. 
Okay. 8 minus 3 is? 5. Yes, the value of 5 is? Nope. 5. And never, the absolute value will never turn something negative. <coughs> the additive inverse is the opposite of it. Okay, so now we're going to do adding integers. So I really like to do the which team, you know, which team wins. So if we have 8 on the negative team, 2 on the positive team, which team wins? Negatives. And by how many? I heard it. Six. If they're different, you have to find the difference. Three on the negative team, three on the, or nine on the negative team. How many total on the negative team? Twelve. So it's negative twelve. So a lot of people were switching this to a positive because you had two negatives. That's only with multiplication, okay? So four on the positive, seven on the negative. Negative three. Negative three, right? The negatives win by three. Six on the negative, four on the positive, that gives us two, and they're on the negative team. <coughs> Bless you. Four on the positive, three on the negative. Negative one. Not negative one. One. One, positive one. Okay, so this one has a combination. There's three here, but I start with a negative. So negative 11 plus negative five, what does that give us? 16. Negative 16. Plus a negative 8, negative 24. Negative 24. Yep, it just kept getting more negative. On the other side, so <clears throat> my trick is, and, and I really think that this helps people in the long run, is to change every subtraction problem to addition. But you have to like be methodical about it. You have to do the exact same thing every time. So we are going to add the opposite of negative 5 is positive 5. I'm going to go through all of them. We are going to add the opposite of positive 9 is negative 9. We are going to add the opposite of negative 5 is positive 5. We are going to add the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. So notice I never touched the first number. Okay, so you can't, you can't mess with those. Negative 3 plus positive 5. Who wins? Wouldn't it be negative 3 since we can just do Nope, because we are adding a positive 5 now. Okay, so we are adding a positive 5, so it turns out to be a positive 2. Negative 7 plus negative 9. They're negative both on the negative team, so it, they team up and become negative 16. Negative 2 plus 5? 3. Positive 3. Good work. 13 plus 2? 15. 15. Okay. So now I have a couple evaluate ones. When you have an evaluate, you put 2 in. So this one here, I would add, oops, add the opposite. So this would give you a negative 11. And then this one I have 9 minus. When I put this in for H, I like to use parentheses there. So you are actually adding the opposite of 7 is negative 7. So this gives you 16. Okay, then when we multiply and divide, the rules are totally different, okay? Um, oh, sorry. So if you have negative 7 minus 9, you add the opposite. Negative 7 plus a negative 9? Negative 16. Good job, you guys. Just once. I must have accidentally, I just was editing this last night, so I must have just accidentally had two of them. Okay, now we're going to multiply and divide. If the signs agree when you multiply and divide, the answer is positive. If they disagree, the answer is negative. So positive times a negative gives me a negative. 4 times 9 is 36. Negative divided by a negative is a positive. 33 divided by 11 is 
3. Negative times a positive is a negative. 7 times 5 is? So, 35. Okay, 72. Positive divided by a negative is a? Negative. negative. 72 divided by 4. If you can't think of it, you can do it off to the side. Watch how I do this. 18. 4 goes into 7 one time. It goes into 32 8 times, so your answer would be a negative 18. <laughs> okay, this one. We've got multiple operations. You have to do on the, what you can on the top first. So a positive times a negative is a? Negative 50. Negative 50. On the bottom, I have a negative 25. It's Nope, dividing. Dividing. Negative 2. Neg positive 2. Positive 2. Because you have a negative divided by a negative, which gave me a positive. Okay. So the last type of problem, we're adding and subtracting, um, solving equations, multiplying and dividing and solving equations, and then um, your inequalities here. So anytime you have to solve for x, you locate the variable. Then you have to move the 7 to the other side. So 7 is being added, so I need to subtract 7 from both sides. 12 minus 7 is? 5. I need to move the 11. 11 is being subtracted from B, so I am going to add 11. B equals 31. D. This one's kind of tricky. So a negative 9 is being added. So to cancel it out, I really need to add 9. Because you're trying to zero this out. So that's zero. negative 9 plus 9 is 0. It's uh, 22. 23 is correct. Last one here. Um, you want to get x by itself, you need to move the 16 to the other side. It's being added, so we're going to subtract 16. It is positive 23. Okay. So, a couple word problems. A polar bear weighs 715 pounds, which is 585 pounds less than a sea cow. How much does a sea cow weigh? What's a sea cow? Uh, it's kind of like a manatee. a manatee. Yep. So, if we have the, the sea cow, minus... Um, 585 pounds, we will get the bear. So, for 585 less than the cow gives us the bear. So, let's plug in what we know. We don't know the cow. We do know that the polar bear weighs 715 pounds. How would we solve it? 1,300. Okay, Devin, what'd you do? You add the 585 to both sides. Did you look up a picture? Yeah, they're ugly. I think manatees are cool. No, sea cows. But isn't a sea cow and manatee the same thing? No. Okay, what'd you get, Devin? Um, 1,300. Then that is pounds. Okay, the Mojave Desert at 15,000 square miles is 11,700 square miles larger than Death Valley. What is the area of Death Valley? So they're saying that the Death Valley is smaller, right? So Death Valley plus the 15, ooh, sorry, plus 11,700 equals the Mojave, which is 15,000. Nope, because Mojave is bigger than Death Valley. So we have to subtract. So that's the other thing. Make sure that you guys check to make sure your answers seem reasonable after you do it. So Death Valley is... What did you say? 3,300, right? No. Yeah. This is 4. Yeah, 3,300 and then square miles. Okay. 
The next problems, we're multiplying or dividing. Again, locate your variable, ask yourself what's happening. Like h is being multiplied by four, so we need to divide by four on both sides. h equals six. y is being divided by two, so you need to multiply both sides by two. Make sure you're always moving the number away from the variable. So two times negative 20, negative 40. G is being multiplied by negative seven. So make sure you take the negative with, but you are dividing by a negative seven. So G equals positive divided by a negative is a negative. negative. 56 divided by seven is eight. Okay. so. Sometimes they give us a negative and they put it right out in front. Well, we're going to make the 4 the negative. Okay, then it, then it gets taken away. So we are going to multiply by a negative 4. So then that causes that to cancel. We have W equals positive times a negative is a negative. 12 times 4 is 48. And this one here, z divided by 24, we are going to multiply both sides by 24. 192. Taking your word for it. No. Actually, if you round it to 25, 8 times 25 is 200, and then you take away 8, you get 192. Okay, the last section, and these were the inequalities. So you get to solve them like normal. So just like we were doing up top here, I like on this one, I would take and subtract 5 from both sides. x is less than or equal to 3. When you graph it, you have to put a closed circle on 3. Those colors are awfully similar. And then x is less than, so we shade this direction. Next one, F, uh, one is being added, so you subtract. We get three is less than x. So this one, there's no line underneath it. It does not include the three, so it's an open circle. X is actually bigger than, do you notice how it's on the bigger side of our inequality? So what numbers would make it true? They go this direction. Letter C, 2 is being added, so I need to subtract 2. X is greater than or equal to 6. So I put 6 here. 7, 5. A closed circle on 6 because there's a line underneath it, so it includes that. X is greater than or equal to 6, so greater than goes this direction. The next one, am I going too fast? No, no. Okay. The next one, W plus 2, I need to minus 2 from both sides. So I have W is greater than 2. An open circle on 2. W is greater than, so 3, 4, 5, that's greater than, so I go that direction. And E, I add 4 to both sides. 2 plus 4 is 6. And then start on 6, 7, 5. Open circle on 6. Y is on the bigger side, though. So we have to think about what numbers would make that inequality true. And it's 7, 8, 9. Those types of numbers would make it true. So it goes that direction. No, you can take and study this, and then your test will be tomorrow.